This video shows the process of writing a story that has several quotes in it. I hope that before watching this video, you had a chance to watch my video with this corny thumbnail. That video discusses how we choose what to quote directly. I also hope that you have seen my other video with the corny thumbnail, and that one is about the rules for writing attributions. I'm trying to keep this video short, so there will be no review of these topics in this video. Instead, the video will explore several examples of quotes. Among them, one quote will be totally paraphrased, one quote will be a direct one, and one more direct quote will be written for a feature story. The example that comes next heavily relies on video provided by American Space Agency NASA. We will first look at the background of this example. On September 25th in 2019, Alex Skripochko of Russia, Hazal Mansouri of the United Arab Emirates, and Jessica Mia of the United States flew to the International Space Station as a part of Expedition 61. Hazal Mansouri became the first astronaut from the United Arab Emirates to fly in space. He will return to Earth on October 3rd together with crew members of Expedition 59 and 60, Russian cosmonaut Alexei Avchinin, and American astronaut Nick Hake. On October 18th, Jessica Mia and her compatriot Christina Koch will participate in the first all-female space walk in history. Jessica Mia and Alex Kripochka will spend 205 days in space and return to Earth on April 17th in 2020. But today is September 10th in 2019, and we are in Star City, just outside Moscow. Good morning. Hello. The launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan is in two weeks from now, and Expedition 61 crew and their backup team are participating in traditional ceremonies at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. We are writing a new story about the crew's participation in the traditional ceremonies, and our lead might read like this. Star City, Russia Russian cosmonaut Alexei Skripochka, U.S. astronaut Jessica Mir, and Emirati astronaut Hazel Mansouri participated in traditional ceremonies at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City outside Moscow on Tuesday before departing for the final stage of training at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The crew is preparing for the launch to the International Space Station on September 25th. That's a bit of a long lead. I bet somebody from the New York Times wrote it. During the ceremonies, the main crew took questions. Please note that you will hear the voice of an interpreter in English. You will also hear somebody clearing their throat while Hazal Mansouri is answering a question. If we were to continue the story with information obtained during the question and answer session, we would be looking mostly for somebody saying something about their feelings, experiences or attitudes. Overly detailed factual information can be summed up in simple language in our own words and attributed to the speaker as last name said. Because this will be the first space flight both for Jessica Mir and for Hazal Mansouri, Alex Kripochka was asked in Russian whether this fact places additional responsibility on him as a commander of the Soyuz spacecraft. Alex Ivanovich, it is your first flight as a commander and you have two uh, new uh, first-time uh, uh, crew members, uh, does it change your responsibility? The commander always has the main responsibility for the success of the increment and the flight. And I should say, though, that my crew members are very well trained. I, Jessica and Haza are well trained, maybe even more than they are, were supposed to be trained within the scope of their duties. That does increase the reliability of our program. I personally feel that the interpreter was in a bit of a hurried situation when she was interpreting both the question and the answer. Because of that, I do not feel comfortable placing the quotation marks around any part of this quote. There is nothing wrong with the work of the interpreter here. I just don't feel comfortable in this case to say that quotation marks contain Skripochka's speech exactly the way he said it. And the more I look at this quote, the more convinced I am that it's better to paraphrase it. And that's what I'm going to do. Put simply, Alex Kripochka is answering a challenging question here, and he defends his teammates. Although we normally don't do this, in this case we probably will sum up the question to provide context of why the topic surfaced in the first place. During the Q&A session, Skripochka was asked whether he has additional responsibility because his crew members are flying to the ISS for the first time. 
Maybe in addition to summarizing the first sentence of the answer in my own words, I can also add the fact that Skripochka is traveling to the space station for the third time. I will also clarify that this is his first time as a Soyuz spacecraft commander. Skripochka, for whom the upcoming space flight is the third flight to the ISS and the first flight as Soyuz spacecraft commander, said the success of a mission is always primarily the commander's responsibility. Please recall that the words Skripochka said are called an attribution. In this case, the attribution is split by the clarification about Skripochka's record of spaceflight. I also need to add that this was said through an interpreter. Please note how I add the word that here, although we usually omit it when reporting in direct quotes. I'm editing the word that because a clarification about an interpreter is standing between the attribution and the paraphrased quote. This is what we have so far. Skripochka, for whom the upcoming space flight is the third flight to the ISS and the first flight as Soyuz spacecraft commander, said through an interpreter that the success of a mission is always primarily the commander's responsibility. Now, I will try not to look at the remaining part of the quote too much and write up the meaning of it. He said the quality of Mir's and al training contributes to the reliability of the expedition. Now, let's look at one more question that was asked during the question and answer session. Beth Weisinger with NASA. Jessica, your research has come to its fruition and gotten published about the same time that you're getting ready to head off for your very yeah. first launch to space. Any last thoughts from you or your colleagues about what it's been like to be here at GCTC and have all of these things culminate at the same time? Yeah, it's been very interesting. She's speaking about my postdoctoral research, which actually was finished in 2012. Uh, it was flying. It was teaching geese how to fly in a wind tunnel to study the hypoxia tolerance, how they tolerate low levels of oxygen in when they migrate over the Himalayas. And because I switched careers, I never actually finished publishing the work, and it happened to just come out just this past week at the same time. So it's kind of and it's an interesting time where. Both of us are taking flight, the goose paper is taking flight, and we're taking flight at the same time. And for me, it has been really an unbelievable experience training here in Star City. As I've said many times before, training here as an American in this previously secret city where the very first <laughs> human flew in space, it is an unbelievable experience and something that is really hard to put into words. This is the text of the entire answer. In the first part of your answer, Jessica Mia is explaining her research project and the circumstances of why the research paper was published a few years after the project was finished. This is factual information that can be summarized in a paragraph before the quote. While Mia was training in Star City, a scholarly paper from a research project she conducted after she earned her doctoral degree was published in an academic journal. For that project, Mia and her co-authors trained bar-headed geese to fly in a wind tunnel. This allowed the scientists to study how the birds' bodies adapted to lower levels of oxygen while the geese flew in the wind tunnel simulating high altitude. We also have a part of the answer that can be described as Jessica Mia saying something in her unique kind of way. It sounds like only Jessica Mia would have described her paper and herself taking flight at the same time. This could be a good direct quote. To quote Jessica Mia in a direct quote, I will start a new paragraph. I will then open the double quotation marks and include the first sentence of the quote exactly the way it was said. It's an interesting time where both of us are taking flight. I will add a comma at the end of the first sentence. I will then close the quotation marks and write Mia said. I will then put a full stop. The words Mia said are an attribution. We tend to attribute quotes after the first sentence or after the first complete third. Please note that in the attribution, we name the person first and then include the word said. Also, in breaking news stories, it's always said in the past tense, not says in present tense, which can be done in future stories. Finally, we avoid using synonyms for the word said. I will continue the quote after a space in the same paragraph. I will open the quotation marks again and add the next sentence of the quote. This will read as... The goose paper is taking flight, and we're taking flight at the same time. I will put a full stop at the end of the second sentence of the quote and close the quotation marks. This paragraph stops here. I will start a new line for the next paragraph. The remaining part of Jessica Mia's answer provides how Mia feels about her experiences in Star City.
Because we never place two quotes one after another, we will include a short transition to a new quote. Mia said training in Star City, which during the Soviet era was not indicated on maps, was an unbelievable experience for her. This is a paraphrased quote that starts with an attribution Mia said. It also has a clause that I added to communicate that Star City used to be a closed military area. This transition also has a partial quote containing the words an unbelievable experience, exactly the way Jessica Mia said them. Let's look at the remaining sentence before we provide it as a direct quote. As I've said many times before, training here as an American in this previously secret city where the very first human <laughs> flew in space, it is an unbelievable experience and something that is really hard to put into words. Jessica Mia started pronouncing the word secret before she corrected herself to say previously secret. We never edit quotes, but this part was only slightly misspoken, and we probably can delete the unfinished word without compromising journalistic ethics. So we will delete the S and E and attribute the quote at the end of the sentence. As I've said many times before, training here as an American in this previously secret city where the very first human flew in space, it is an unbelievable experience and something that is really hard to put into words, Mia said. It doesn't sound entirely perfect that the story says an unbelievable experience twice, but we are echoing Jessica Mia, who herself acknowledged that she keeps on repeating this. But let's imagine for a minute that instead of paraphrasing the part about training in Star City and reporting some of it as a partial quote, I want to continue quoting Mia directly. Please remember that our direct quote about taking flight looks like this. It's an interesting time where both of us are taking flight. Mia said. The goose paper is taking flight and we're taking flight at the same time. We technically could have added the part about Star City here within the quotation marks after the words at the same time. But because the part about Star City starts a new topic, I will continue the quote in a new paragraph. Please note that in this case we do not need to close the quotation marks in the first paragraph of the quote. This way we are showing that the quote is not complete yet. But we do need to start the next paragraph with the opening quotation marks. We will then include the rest of the quote inside the quotation marks and end the last sentence with a full stop. We will then close the quotation marks. Please pay attention to all the punctuation signs that are highlighted in red. Now, let's imagine that instead of a breaking news story about the send-off of the Expedition 61 crew members from Star City, we are writing a feature story about things that astronauts and cosmonauts bring with them to the International Space Station. When we are writing this feature story, we are still in September 2019. In this feature story, we will probably not mention the Expedition 61 crew members in the lead. Instead, at the start of the feature, we will focus on the history of visits to the ISS. Who brought what to the ISS earlier? We will probably mention that Chris Hatfield managed to bring enough to be able to record himself performing David Bowie's Space Oddity in Space. Ground control to Major Tom. And then we will continue with What will Expedition 61 crew take with them to the ISS? This is what Hazel Mansuri will say. شو <تصفيق> قص كتاب قصتي للشيخ زاي الشيخ محمد بن راشد آل مكتوم وأيضا ما خذ معي أشياء تذكارية أخرى. Let's look at the transcript of Hazel Al Mansouri's answer. Truthfully, I carry with me the visions, dreams, and aspirations of the UAE and Arab nations as a whole, and that alone is a great honor. And I also carry some sentimental items with me, such as a photo of His Highness Sheikh Zayed, may God have mercy on his soul, when he first met the Apollo Soyuz astronauts during the 70s, and they were discussing space exploration. I also carry a copy of the Holy Quran with me, and a copy of my story, a book by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al-Maktoum, along with other personal sentimental items. 
We will probably let Haz al-Mansuri say the first sentence in a direct quote, because here he talks about his feelings, and he has a special way to express them. Now let's have a look at the rules here. First, while the translation of this quote has it as one sentence, it can be logically separated into two complete thirds. One of these thirds is about the great honor of carrying the dreams of the nation, and another third is about sentimental items. I will quote directly only the first complete third about carrying the visions, dreams, and aspirations of the Arab nations. I will paraphrase the information about sentimental items. According to the rules we've discussed so far, the attribution will go here after the closing quotation marks, as Al-Mansuri said. Please note, though, that this is a feature story, and we can use present tense here, so we can say says instead of said. Al-Mansuri says. But please also note that we didn't introduce Haz al-Mansuri earlier in the story. Instead, we were talking about Chris Hatfield's space oddity. Lock your Soyuz hatch and put your helmet on. So, we should introduce al-Mansuri by his job title and full name. Emirati astronaut Haz al-Mansuri says. Please note that if, instead of the word Emirati, we will provide the full name of the country, the United Arab Emirates, the attribution will look like this. United Arab Emirates astronaut Haz al-Mansuri says. This brings the job title, United Arab Emirates astronaut, to four words, and such long titles tend to go after the name. Haz al-Mansuri, United Arab Emirates astronaut, says. Please note that when a loan title follows the person's name, we will use a different order for the attribution. Instead of starting the attribution with the name of the person who is talking, we will start it with the word says. This will mean that we will start the attribution for Haz al-Mansuri's quote with says Haz al-Mansuri, comma, United Arab Emirates astronaut, full stop. And because we relied on the translation from Arabic, we will replace the full stop with a comma and add the words through an interpreter, full stop. We will continue the story with a new paragraph to let the direct quote we just wrote have a paragraph of its own. Armansuri says he will bring to the ISS a photo of the founder of the UAE, Sheikh Zayed, meeting the Apollo-Soyuz astronauts in the 1970s, a copy of the Holy Quran, a book by the UAE Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, My Story, and some other personal items with a special meaning to him. We would, of course, pressure Haz Al Mansuri to tell us more about the other personal items with a special meaning. And this brings us to the end of this video. This video was created by me, Yulia Medvedeva. Footage for this video came from American Space Agency NASA. The music featured in this video is Chris Hatfield's cover of Space Oddity by David Bowie. Thank you for watching.